This lecture is part of a series of lectures on the axioms of zermelo frenkel set theory and will be about the axioms of separation and replacement, which turn out to be rather closely related. So we'll start with the axiom of separation. This says any subset of a set um, A is also a set. Well, that's a little bit vague because we haven't really said what a subset actually is. Um, so what you've got to do is, is, is you fix some sort of rule such that for any set 5x is true or false. And then the axiom of replacement says the, 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 the elements of A such that phi of x is true is also a set. So it said the elements x of A. Or more, more precisely, it says there exists a set consisting exactly of the elements of, of A such that phi of x is true. If you omit the set A, then um, so, so, so without A, this gives the axiom of comprehension which says that for any um, property you can find a, that you can form a set of elements with that property and this leads to a contradiction um, using Russell's paradox we, 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 we just a phi of x means x is not a member of x. So, so putting in the set A is a sort of way of shielding us from this, um, th this contradiction. Um, and there's a bit of a problem here um, what do we mean by a rule? Um, and this was rather controversial. So um, Zermelo just said that phi had to be, you know, what he called a definite property, some property that's always either true or false for any set. The trouble is this is rather vague because you don't know what a property is. Um, so Skolem and Frankel um, added the condition that phi has to be stated in the language of first order set theory. So that, that, that means you can um, form statements using and and or and not and implies and for all and there exists and you're allowed various variables and so on. So this gives a precise description of what you mean by a rule. Um, I should say the rule is also allowed to depend on other sets you've already constructed but we won't worry about that too much now. And uh, um, so this gives a precise meaning of the axiom of separation. Um, the problem is Zermelo really hated this. Um, he was really down on first order logic. And part of the reason is there's this theorem called the lowenheim skolem theorem, which says that for any um, reasonable theory, you can find a countable model of it if there's a, an infinite model at all. And if you apply this to the axioms for set theory, this gives the rather bizarre conclusion that there's a countable model for zermelo frankel set theory, assuming the axioms are, are, are consistent. And this is bizarre because the axioms imply that there is an uncountable set. So how can you possibly have a countable model of an uncountable set? And the answer is that the concept of being uncountable is, is not actually absolute. It, it depends on which model you're working in. And when Zermelo came across this, he just completely freaked out about it and decided that this was you know, absolute nonsense. You, you, you can't have countable models of set theory. Um, so in, in, instead of deducing that you can have countable models, set, models of set theory like most other mathematicians, Zermelo's conclusion was that first order logic was just unspeakably evil and you should have nothing whatsoever to do with it. So, so he wouldn't accept that phi has to be restricted to a statement of first order logic. Um, so next we come to the axiom of replacement and the axiom of replacement says that given a set A and a function f the um, image of um, f restricted to A is also a set. So it says sort of the image of a set under a function is a set. Well this leads to problems rather similar 
to the axiom of replacement. Um, so we're, we're talking about a function and there's a bit of a problem. What do we mean by a function? And, and Zermelo again had this rather vague idea that it was any sort of rule which assigned exactly one set to any other set. And Scullum and Frankel um, said, well, this, is, this isn't really precise enough. Um, F has to be given by some formula of two variables in the language of set theory. So, so for each x there must be exactly one value of y such that phi of x, y is true, where phi is defined using and, or, not, and, and all the rest of it, and may depend on other sets as parameters. Um, so um, once you've done this, then this becomes a well-defined um, axiom. Well, actually it's not really an axiom. Um, separation and replacement are both infinite collections of axioms, one for each formula phi. So, um, um, that, well, having an infinite number of axioms seems a bit worrying at first, but it doesn't really matter that much because um, you, you, you can describe all the axioms fairly easily by some fairly systematic rule. You know, you can just write out all the formulas um, the technical term is that the set of axioms is computably enumerable, that, that, that uh, you can write down a computer program that will just list them. And that, for many purposes, that turns out to be almost as good as a finite set of axioms. Um, you can ask whether you can actually find a finite set of axioms for zermelo frankel set theory, and this turns out to depend on exactly what you mean. Um, um, so strictly speaking, the answer is no. It turns out that for any finite number of axioms of zermelo frankel set theory, um, you can actually prove they're consistent in zermelo frankel set theory, um, which, which means that, that, that zermelo frankel set, set theory must be strictly stronger than that, than that finite set by Gödel's incompleteness theorem. Um, on the other hand, there are extensions of zermelo frankel set theory due to Gödel and Bernays, which allow classes as well, and these do have a finite number of axioms, and the, 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 the theorems about set theory that they prove turn out to be exactly the same as the theorems proved by zermelo frankel set theory. So it's, uh, there is a sort of mild extension of zermelo frankel set theory that does have a finite number of axioms. Um, so um, next we can ask um, what is what are separation and replacement used for? Well, well, separation is pretty obvious. You, you quite often form subsets of sets. That's used all the time. So I'll say a bit more about what replacement is used for. And if you're just an ordinary mathematician not working in set theory, you've probably never in your life used the axiom of replacement. Um, the one place where you really need it is when you're forming the von Neumann hierarchy. Um, so you know, you have v alpha plus 1 is the power set of v alpha, and you form v omega using the axiom of infinity, v omega plus 1 and so on. And then you get up to v omega plus omega. Well, to form v omega plus omega, you need the axiom of replacement and the axiom of union. So you first use the axiom of replacement to find a set containing all these elements here. You can, you can find a function taking, say, the natural numbers or two copies of the natural numbers to these sets here. And then you can use the axiom of union to form v omega plus omega. And every time you get to a limit ordinal, um, again you have to use the axiom of union and replacement in order to form the corresponding term of the von Neumann hierarchy. Well, um, you never really need replacement because this set here is big enough to do almost all ordinary mathematics in. For example, the real numbers live in this set here. Um, the subsets of the real numbers live in v omega plus 2. And you probably never use sets that are bigger than the collection of subsets of the real numbers. So, so ordinary mathematics sort of lives down, down in this region here and never goes here or beyond it. Um, so anybody making serious use of replacement is probably a set theorist, not an ordinary mathematician. Um, we can also find models for set theory, zermelo frankel set theory minus replacement. And an obvious model is just the set v omega plus omega. You just, you just apply the power set operation a countable number of times to 
um, the her hereditarily finite sets and just take their union. Um, so zermelo frankel set theory minus replacement is more or less Zermelo's original 1908 axioms for set theory. It's not quite the same because he didn't have foundation, which is a fairly mild axiom, and there, there, there is this question about what separation actually means and whether you restrict it to first order statements. But um, morally, zermelo frankel set theory minus replacement is, a, is essentially the same as Zermelo's original axioms. So, um, so V omega plus omega is more or less a model of Zermelo's original 1908 axioms. Um, similarly, you can take V alpha whenever alpha is a limit ordinal greater than omega, and that, that will again be a model for Zermelo's axioms. Um, so next you can ask, um, well, we've shown replacement is necessary because if you drop it, then you, you, you can find models and prove the consistency so, so it can't be deduced from the other axioms. What about separation? Well, the axiom of separation almost follows from replacement. Um, so suppose we've got any set whatsoever, A, B, C, and so on, and we want to form a subset of it. Well, what we can do is we can pick one element A of this, and now we can define a function which, say, takes A to A, it might take B to A, it might take C to C, it might take D to D, it might take E to A, and so on. So we're going to define a function um, depending on a condition phi. And if, if phi of x is true, then we're going to let phi of x equal x. And if phi of x is false, we're going to let phi of x be a. So we're defining a function, and you notice the image of this function is just the set of, of x such that phi of x is true. So the, 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 this seems to imply the axiom of separation. We, we've shown that given any set, we can define a, any given subset of it as the image of a function. Well, there's one slight catch. We need some a with phi of a true in order to define this. So we can get any non-empty subset. So the axiom of replacement will imply the axiom of replacement, axiom of separation for non-empty subsets. It does actually fail for empty subsets. And the reason for this is we can take the universe without the empty set, and this is a model of zermelo frankel set theory without the axiom of separation. So without separation you can't actually prove the existence of the empty set, but you can prove everything else. So this means the axiom of separation is really needlessly complicated. You could just replace it with an axiom saying the empty set exists. Um, alternatively you can tweak the axiom of replacement very slightly, make it very slightly stronger so that it will actually imply the empty set axiom. For instance, instead of saying you this thing has to be a function, you could say it only has to be a partial function that doesn't need to be defined anywhere. So, so you can actually drop the axiom of separation by making some very small changes. And the axiom of separation is usually included mostly for historical reasons. Um, there's no good reason for including it together with replacement. Um, so uh, next, th th there are actually several variations of the axiom of replacement. Um, first of all, we can allow partial functions instead of um, functions that are defined everywhere, and this just means that we can drop the axiom of separation without worrying about the empty set. Um, secondly, we can combine it with the axiom of union. So the, the, the axiom of replacement is really 
used together with the axiom of union in order to construct sets of the von Neumann hierarchy. And some authors, such as Bourbaki, actually combine these two axioms into a single axiom. Um, um, another thing you can do is, is you can use something called... You, you, you can replace it with something called the axiom of collection. The axiom of collection is actually sometimes confused with the axiom of replacement. So what the axiom of collection says is that if you've got a collection of non-empty sets, then we can find a set containing at least one of each of the elements of this set of non-empty sets. Um, so the usual axiom of replacement is more or less the case when each of these sets has exactly one element, so it's just a function. Um, so the axiom of collection is a sort of slightly stronger version of the axiom of replacement. Um, the axiom of collection turns out to be really useful for weak models of set theories. Um, so sometimes people like to consider weaker models of set theory, such as kripke platek set theory, where you, you drop the axiom of power set. Um, and it turns out that if you do this, then axioms of collection and replacement aren't quite equivalent, and the axiom of collection is in fact rather more convenient to use. Um, so really the axiom of replacement is... Again, it's a historical axiom, and it would probably have been better to use something like the axiom of collection instead of it. Um, um, we can also um, we can combine with the axiom of choice. For example, this says you can find a set containing at least one element of each of these collection of sets. And if we replace greater than or equal to 1 by equal to 1, we would actually get the axiom of choice. But that's probably not a good idea, because when you're looking at weak models of set theory, you usually don't want to include the axiom of choice in those. Um, OK, so uh, next lecture will be about the most controversial of all axioms of set theory, which is the axiom of choice. <laughs>